day, you guys. So my uh, teaching computer is being a little wonky here. So we are over here on my other system right now today. So we are going to get going here. So I don't have my startup screen as I'm over here on my uh, trading computer here for this session. A little bit of trouble getting uh, rebooted here. I went to reboot and it decided to load uh, all the updates. <laughs> so what we're going to be doing is just looking at my main screen here. And we're going to start by, for those of you that are new to Forward Focus, what we do is we take a look at what is going on in the overall market. And uh, basically all of the different indices and all of that jazz. So I'm going to start here with the NASDAQ because I'm going to make this all nice and pretty here for you. Nice and big and pretty here. And uh, we're going to go look at the larger time frames to start with. And then we'll drop this down. So clear. My fibs. I know you guys are like, hey, if that's your trading computer, where's all your indicators? There's not. <laughs> I don't use much for indicators on here. So you can see an occasional indicator, but not a whole lot. I'll go and add them to some of the charts and then I'll I'll take them off others. So you might see them on some You'll s and then you'll see them on others. One thing you guys are going to notice is that I use which market here am I looking at for my analysis these days? You guys see that up there? I know it's probably pretty tiny, right? It's the micro. So the reason, and basically I started switching over this, um, you know, I think I became like, aware that I was doing this probably about two or three months ago and the reason is with the increase in volume in the micros what we're seeing is some smoother movement in the micros and it's especially obvious after hours because you might still have like a two-point uh, spread on the NQ and we just aren't having that on the micros and that started of course when the market crashed back in February March whatever it was and um, and that's when we started seeing that and it's it's basically been um, kind of building so you're starting with you start to use like your indicators and things in the markets if you have your micro as your main chart, even if you're trading the E-minis, which I kind of go back and forth, so I'll use hedge one and trade the other, kind of depends on what time frame I'm on. And you can build up size really good in the micros, you guys, without too much difficulty. So you can get up to trading 40, 50 micros at a time. Um, what I recommend is kind of putting them as like basket type of trades so that you're not like you know one 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 because then your screen's going to get crazy but you can get up to really good size in them and not have um, much of an impact or any type of a sway on the market so that's really good something for you guys to keep in mind as you start building up size as you're tra transitioning between trading the micros and adding in e-minis as your skill levels are improving um, it's also something to keep in mind if you are trading the E-minis and you might be like, for example, uh, like I was, you might be short on a bigger time frame and you might want to hold for the potential for that to try to do a bigger move. But at the same time, you might get to a point where you know there's a really good chance that it's going to bounce at least intraday and it could bounce for like an entire day. And so you want to put a hedge on. So you can hedge your uh, e-mini trade with the micros and do a perfect hedge, which is something that we didn't have really the ability to do before. So highly recommend thinking about that uh, if you don't already, especially for those of you that are swing trading, uh, whether you're swing trading the micros or you're swing trading the e-minis. All right, so let's go back to this, the larger time frames here. 
not sure why this isn't pulling up further data, but anyway, so we'll go look at uh, the daily time frame. So last week, what were we looking at on the daily charts, you guys? You remember? Impulse, what? Impulse waves, yes. So we were coming into here and last week. And what we were seeing is that this move up here, we compare that to previous impulse waves in the market. And then this one has two in it. Downside moves here. There's some that are a little bit shorter, you know, some of the really strong ones are a little bit longer, but overall it, it's at a pretty good extended level. Let me change the color on this. This is kind of hard to see this contrast, isn't it, you guys? And we didn't have anything that was, you know, perfectly the same momentum. This one's a little stronger, this one's a little slower, this one's a little slower. So we're kind of in between the extreme ones and then some of the smaller ones. But we're getting up to that level where it told me, hmm, there's still some wiggle room, potentially, but also it's a good zone that we can start to see some inch day reversals. And lo and behold, that's what we ended up experiencing this week. So it's been a pretty choppy week because that impulse wave on that daily time frame is still pretty strong. And if we look over here at the waves that were coming up, especially that last one into the beginning of July there, and then looking over here, the 240, the swing up here, it's a pretty strong move. This one's pretty more close to average right here. Why would we consider this to be close to an average momentum move in this trend, you guys? I'm gonna test some of your knowledge here. Why is that considered to be pretty average? Overlaps, yeah, when this is pulling back. So we get these surges, but when it's pulling back, it's pulling back a lot and, and overlapping a lot of the moves over here. We don't see that. We see the spikes, pauses, spikes, pauses, spikes, a little bit longer pauses, but overall, not the overlaps. And so that overlap is shifting our channel, which brings us up to the megaphone that we were talking about as we were starting the week. And the, the ES is a little bit cleaner, I think, on the, on the megaphone. We'll go over and look at that here in a, in a minute. But overall, we've got, Spacing one, two, three, four, five. So spacing is increasing. Notice between one and two, or one and three rather, we have the shorter spacing. Between two and four, we've got bigger spacing. And then between three and five, we've got the biggest spacing. Now, even though two technically here is not like a really good, let me clear it, not like a really good higher high, it's basically a double high. A typical megaphone would go a little bit higher. So you would have a little bit of a higher high to create more of a trap. And we didn't have that there. there. That's why it's a little bit off. And I think that's why it, it's not really turning over as fast too. So we have the shift here a little bit within this. We saw this turnaround. We were following um, some two T's and shallow avalanches up here on the smaller time frame. Let me clear that so I can show you guys that smaller time frame. If I keep dropping down, you can see this starting to change momentum right here. So what's the deal with this pullback right here? more than a third of the previous rally, right? So with really strong momentum like that, if it pulls back more than a third on that first drop, it can have a harder time continuing. This one didn't here, this one did. 
increased really strong momentum there. Sorry, you guys had really strong momentum here. So it had a harder time continuing right away. It kind of just played around here before it got going. Here, not quite a third. Here, not quite a third. What we're looking for is that first massive drop. So really strong impulse move, and then it drops a third quickly. So that's what happened here, and then it went into this avalanche. So that came down really really strong and what I was looking for was you know something for another avalanche to kind of turn things around but the momentum was so strong here that it can be harder to get a, an overall trend reversing as easily so instead of just kind of continuing to you know do things that could shift the momentum and round things off a little bit more you tried to go a little bit too much, too quickly, too fast, too quickly. We saw good continuation patterns, though. It still had, you know, the shorter little continuation here, then it widened up, did a bigger continuation with a one, two, three here, then we started to get phoenixes, kind of flipped things over. So in a, you know, something that can turn around a little bit easier, a little bit more rounding off would be better. We didn't quite have it. So what it's trying to do is do a bit of a double tap and then see if it can get that momentum turning over. It's still a little bit on the iffy side though, you guys. So what I was looking at last night was I shorted this and I held it as, I held part of this as a swing overnight from our, our trades yesterday when things were turning around off the high over here. And, um, what we saw is that in this pullback here, this time development, this was basically a do or die point. So if this was gonna treat this kind of like a tilted continuation and spike back up there, really should have done it right about there. So it didn't do that. We ended up getting the other um, pull here, but you'll notice that our spikes are still pretty strong momentum. So, you know, maybe we could get patterns like um, an inverse or a head and shoulders here. I'm still concerned though, because this only had one move up. You know, here with the strong momentum, we get two main moves down and we get the two-way correction here in the middle, which is kind of tricky because you might think, oh, hey, that's the second leg down. No, this is still part of this correction here in the middle. But this, we only have one spike up. So with one spike up, I'm always a little more hesitant. So here we've got a spike up and then it continues over here. Here we have got a spike down and it continues over here. So with just one spike up, it makes things not as clear because there can be a shift again that can put this up here again and do like, you know, even like a 2T or something. So I'm still looking at that as a possibility. I don't have as clear of a view on things as a result I'm just watching what's going on on the smaller time frame now I did take a chance on this that it could go and and end up holding and that we could get more of a pullback here but as you're seeing there's a lot of overlap back and forth it's not a clean move so in order for the bears to really be begin to take over as well we would need something that's more like a shallow avalanche usually, and that would help bring in some of that stronger selling again. So we don't really have that yet. So this could easily go and, and chop around more as we go into next week. Just not a clear view. Look at the bounce here. This is a strong move. It bounced a third. So that increases risk on short side moves. So let's go over here. This, does, this one doesn't because it's not a full bounce right away. So even though this bounces over a third here, it's not a concern. It's the ones that bounce a third right away off of that low, then they have a harder time going and, and dropping as easily again. So see how that bounces a third? And then it kind of pushes up again. And then it drops, but it pushes up again more first. That's what the risk is. 
So with a bounce here that does that really fast, the risk is that it's not going to fall as quickly again. You'll find some exceptions to this, you guys, but generally speaking, it's a pretty good rule that you can stick by. And so if you see something bounce third, it's coming back up again, you, you might want to get, you know, a little bit more aggressive and then watch for a setup later on if it confirms that it's going to try to go again. Rounding off can help it bounce a little bit more too. So that's not quite the same. What we're looking at is like the pivots. So pivot and pulling back a third makes it harder. All right, let's see here. So I'm gonna show you guys uh, the ES next. Hold on a second. I moved a lot of my charts out of the way. So here you can see some of the fibs that I had here on the micros. And I'm going to go to that larger time frame. So here's our daily. And so what you can see is on the daily, we're coming up to that previous high, kind of pushed through it just a tiny bit, but it's still resistance. And so what we're looking at is, grab my pen. Come on maybe there we go we're looking at a two wave move up here so this is just kind of all congestion here in the middle we've got a first impulse move here kind of midway but it's not really you know big impulse wave so I'm counting this whole zone here as congestion so we've got one swing up two swings up this is our third main swing up the momentum on this is still pretty average though again a lot of overlap Pretty average momentum, overlap with spikes. So what that tells me is that even a correction here, you could still get more shifting. We don't have to. It could do a VTOP and turn around, do like an, an avalanche, but there's still a possibility that it could go to some higher highs. We just don't quite know yet. So in this zone here, you know, we've got a measured move here to here. We can start looking for corrections, but it might not give us a full turnaround as easily because again, momentum's not really shifted that much yet. So here, what you can see is that with this move and then this move, the overall momentum at this point is this. Because if you divide this pullback here and then this rally there, that's what your momentum's like there. So that actually did shift it over here, even though you might not think about it because it spiked so fast here. It still shifted the overall momentum. So we don't have even that same momentum here yet. It's closer, it's not, in fact, it's stronger than it was over here. So it's, it's a little bit more iffy. You're kind of, you know, looking at smaller time frames now to test out reversals, but you use advanced trade management, take a lot of partials off at early support levels, and then look to add back in. And then, you know, anything that that's left, you can say, oh, I'm going to kind of sacrifice that, but be willing to realize that it could still be the very early stages of where things aren't really turning around yet. So this could still do a, a 2T yet. You know, it could still do stuff to try to shift things around here. And we are basically in those early stages where a lot of traders can get trapped. They can get more stops, especially like if you're swing trading right now. This would be a zone where you might be in a very early stage, but it could still do some more flushes to try to bring people out before it tries to turn over. So that's what you guys really have to keep in mind as you're going into next week, that, hey, yeah, it's a good resistance zone. We've got a nice, in fact, it's, it might even be like a 123.6. Let me go and put those extensions on here. It's funny, I have hotkeys set up on this computer, but I, I don't even use them half the time, <laughs> except to like clear my screen, show executions. 
So I guess we're not quite at uh, even 100% yet. Completely did not eyeball that properly. I am shock and dismay. <laughs> no, so this could still pop up here a little bit more, you know? There's still room. There's still some wiggle room up in there. So notice how I did these extensions, though. I used the, the first pull up here, and then it went into a two-wave correction. And that two-wave correction is a little bit tricky to see. But what you can see is that, hey, this is one main low, and this is two main low zone. So that's how we're looking at that as a two-wave correction. Now, originally, I used this up and then looked at that as a 100% zone. So I looked at this as like a potential for a 2T level, keeping in mind again what we saw in that larger time frame was it was still kind of kind of early. So this pulled up here, that invalidated that 2T. This was really strong room momentum, remember you guys? And what I said at the time was that, that it should have gone faster if it was going to confirm. So if you have a really strong momentum move out of a 2T, you don't want it pausing at the upper end of the support zone. You want it falling fast into that zone, offering just a pause, and then it will go and do really well. So pausing where it did is a heads up that, hmm, something is not right here. Something's wrong. It's not going to have quite the potential I was expecting. So this went and it basically just based out too long. And so when it hit to the level where it was about the same amount of time as that, that should do a die point there for like a bigger move. And then we saw it basically treat this as a two-wave correction here instead. So this is how I was thinking of this going as it's, as it's um, developing. There are do or die points on these strategies, you guys. And if it doesn't go where it should go, don't be too stubborn about, oh, I'm going to give it a little bit more room. Just accept that, you know, it, it's not doing what it should have done. You can always get back in. So even if you wanted to, you know, wait and see if it did like a, a smaller 2T here, I would still take part of the trade-off so that you're not ending up with a full stop if it doesn't work. So start to use advanced trade management, taking gains at support, getting out at resistance, gains at support. That way, if it doesn't go, then you don't have a full stop. And you can even a lot of times end up with a gain doing that. It takes a lot of practice though, so drop down to smaller time frames and work on it on the smaller time frame setups. And that way you can do that easier on on the bigger time frames. It's actually can be easier because if you're trading these on like a 240 minute chart, you can even hedge using your your micro, you know? So that's something to think about too. So anyways, we're up here we're at a zone that can be a widening up zone now. So we can start to get more of the, the back and forth action like we saw in here again. But not much for bigger time frame setups for intraday charts here. Lots of scalps, but not really a whole lot else. So let's go take a look at some of the other markets, you guys. I'm going to pull up gold here. I can actually show you a gold chart. Ooh. I don't have gold um, permissioned on my uh, my teaching computer. Got to pay for all those extra feeds, and I just don't use it over there. So here is gold. This is our 10,000 tick chart. I'm actually going to go up here. Uh, so what you guys can see is that on the weekly time frame, we've been really bullish on gold over the last year, basically from the time it started to do the shifting around here. And slower kind of start, gains momentum, we got all of this kind of messiness in here. And then we got the parabolic insane <laughs> extreme move. So it's kind of gaining momentum. When things gain momentum, that's where sometimes we'll get more of the spike tops that can go into, sometimes go into a 2T, but they might not even go to a higher high all the time. They could go into an avalanche. Um, 
they can shift momentum and go into higher highs, but we don't know. Because when something is going parabolic like this and then it starts to correct, there's a lot of ways that that can play out and you have to drop down to smaller time frames because that parabolic move on the larger time frame, a lot can happen. It, it's There's no like set fast rule for it. It's basically the smaller time frames that are gonna be your guide. So if we drop down to this here on the uh, daily chart, you can see things kind of tried to tease a shift here. We had a like a measured move here. It broke it and then flushed. And intraday up here, we had a lot of reversal patterns. So we can't see that here. We can only see, oh, the really massive flush. But on the smaller time frames, we had a lot of really good reversal patterns, as you guys know in the forum, because we were trading them. Here is the 2T. Good, and even smaller. So what you got here is this was that last breakout. Look at that phoenix there. So we had that last push and then the shifting started to come in. Now at this, this last move was still really strong. So I waited for the smaller 2T. So that kind of helps give a better confirmation. Went into an avalanche, a little baby one, then the bigger avalanche. And that's a theme, you guys. Things will go from baby, bigger, bigger at times when you're looking at really small time frames. So then as we're moving along here, we've got the parabolic move to the downside. And clear this. Again, it kind of starts a little bit slower and then gain speed. So this is actually our main wave here. So you got like your two main moves here, and then these are your shifting here, which is kind of hard to see, but this is your three lows. So a lot of people keep counting these as like different waves down. But what I keep in mind is that when we are going from an avalanche, you're typically gonna go into a one, two, three, and then you go into a widening up zone. So the widening up zone really started here, even though it looks like your trend continues. And that's why some of these waves might not look as big as that middle one. So sometimes this widening up zone, again, it can go into like a megaphone. It can go into a bigger two, two B. Um, it could even hold this here, do a shallow Phoenix and go and gain momentum back up on the upside. So there's a lot of ways that things can happen at that widening up zone. So you have to watch how it's reacting off of that widening up zone. And in this case, it basically just continued to give continuation patterns until we got down in here. Which brings us to what's going on here. So yesterday, this was the main pattern I was watching, was the Phoenix here. It's a checkmark Phoenix. What's going on with that checkmark Phoenix, you guys? Those in the Liga Traders and the forum, what's the deal with a check mark? We're actually going to be covering check marks um, next week in Liga Traders. So, what's the deal here? Yeah, it pulled back about a, about a half. And then this is kind of chopping around there in the middle of the pullback. So, what's that mean? What do you look for for your main target then? Right, you look for this move up and then that move as your main target. So typical Phoenix, you're looking for this and then breaking out. When a check mark has those particular traits, it's harder for it to do that. So it could go into another base, kind of double out this and then try to go again. That's a possibility, but it increases the potential that it could go and double out. And it reached that time development. Let me put those on there because I was watching for this to try to see if it could go and give me another setup. You can see there's a little kind of fake check mark there, but the problem is it had too strong a move. So it's starting to round here and actually gives you more of the short, but there's a time development factor here. 
So when it gets to, let me add this. Here's our first zone of congestion. Here's our second one. So when it gets to about that same amount of time, if it goes past that and starts to go past that, that's not going to have a good chance of going up. So it's, it's not at like the absolute, I mean, it could still, you know, pop down in here and then, you know, manage to come back up and still break. So it, it's not totally done for, but it, it's definitely getting a little concerning there. <laughs> so we've got to watch this, see if, you know, maybe it tries to do some intraday moves to try it again, put another pop up there. But with the bigger time frames here, you can see it kind of iffy. One good thing we've got going is that it bounced a third right there. But that doesn't mean you won't get another, you know, so that that is kind of like helpful for the bulls, but not but. <laughs> so that's kind of helpful for the bulls. That kind of helps it keep from turning around and dropping like all the way down as fast. It makes it harder for that to happen. So what we've seen though is that it can go a third and then it could just shift and then come back down. We saw that earlier on the charts that I was showing you guys. So it doesn't necessarily mean that it's going to give a really strong turnaround, but it does mean that it's harder for those bears to just come back in and fully take over again. So it could go into a range here, could go into like a bigger avalanche. That avalanche probably wouldn't break quickly because this is too extreme here. So it could go into something like that and then try to pull back up. Right now, do I only count one wave up in the correction? I'd count this as the first, as the main move up. So it could do a shift where this becomes two, and then there's a shift that's three, like that. Um, what I was looking for originally was this would be one, and then this could be two. So what you'll notice is that sometimes that two, this can be treated as two, or it could be treated as just a pause between two bigger moves. And it kind of depends upon how that ends up playing out there. So I will think of things sometimes one way, but then I'll go and flip it depending upon how the momentum plays out. All right, you guys, I'm going to pull up some of these other markets you guys are asking about. Oh, it's probably going to change all my charts. <laughs> Hold on. You know what I'm going to do? This is a new window. I don't want it messing up my trading layouts too much and taking too long to load. So we're going to put this new here. Maybe. I hadn't rebooted over here, so let's see here. It is not letting me change that chart. It's weird. All right, hold on one second. I am going to go and grab trading view quick so we can use that. So that will load quickly for us. might pop out. I don't have my, I don't think I'm logged in completely. So on Amazon, I'm going to pull up the full featured chart, you guys. And look at the one day. What on earth? Oh, one minute. 
There we go. Anyway, I don't use this uh, very much, you guys. So what we've got going on up here is that we are looking at one zone of congestion here, one main leg up here, second main leg up here. So far, not quite the same amount of time yet, is it? So it's popped up here, and it looks like it's trying to do a little bit of a check mark. Not a whole lot of a volume drop. You can see drop, the volume dropped really well in May and into the beginning of June. That's exactly the type of volume drop you want to see for a really good breakout. Not as much of a drop yet. This could possibly do a false break, pull back in to the channel, and then do another break and try to do another, another move up. Because this move here was stronger than over here. So that leaves room for this to try to still push up a little bit more. So I'm not seeing this as being totally done for on this daily time frame at this moment. We've been holding it in the correction pretty well. It did fall and do that third move there off of the highs. It kind of shifted a little bit more so it wasn't like it was a, um, a pure V pivot on it, but it has made it harder for that to just totally take off again. So it ran into trouble when it tried to do that, pulled back down, lower low. So it's gone into this longer correction. And again, whenever you get that third off of a strong impulse move, especially if it does it like that, and just like a really rapid move, it's really hard for it to regain those that bullish move. So it's, it's less common that this would go pull and then manage to keep going. It usually needs some sort of extra change in there and that change could lead to even more downside so watch out for that that's what we've got happening here so a little bit longer look at this time development here is kind of your first start but it really is goes out to here because that's where it's retesting that support again so that's what you're looking at is the time development is kind of like these two little levels there So as long as it's holding up that long, I, I wouldn't get too excited on the bearish side because you could get false moves. Let's look at some of the other markets here. Let's see Baidu. Oops. So by two, we've got this trap coming out of this. Wasn't quite an avalanche because it, it pulled back over 50% and it's only one leg of pullback. So a true avalanche would, would have um, a two-way pullback. So this is finding support here at that previous low. And that's what it's kind of struggling with. So I... You know, this larger time frame is rounding off. Uh, even though this could pull back, I wouldn't get you know too excited about it yet. We've got a nice phoenix over here, kind of rounding off over here. Let me back up to the weekly. I, this is just, hold on. I haven't pulled up trading views in a few months here. Out of practice. Don't need an arrow. Squish it up. Okay, so what I'm looking at here is a lot of support over here and kind of shifted. It didn't quite do, you know, a three lows. It wasn't quite a fully formed ballet toe, but notice it kind of did the same thing we would expect from a fully formed formed ballet toe, it popped, flushed, and it's popping again. But since it wasn't fully formed, we could still see that pull down here again. There's no good shift yet to bring bulls back in. We've got kind of a slower move up here versus over here. So I wouldn't be too excited about this on the upside again quite yet. I would think, you know, maybe it could shift momentum again. 
and try to turn things. Let's go a little bit larger. I'm going to put this up on a monthly. Yeah, so monthly has room for another poll here too. Come on, pen. There we go. So that could come into here, then try to do another pop to get, you know, more of like a swing trade type of move, shorter term move there. Larger, this could then go and do, you know, bigger like that. That's what I'm looking at there. Uh, a mat. Hold on one second. I do use the Trading View app a lot on my phone because Ninja Trader doesn't have um, a mobile app yet. I don't know if they ever will. They really better get with it and do it, but they haven't yet. Um, let's see. Hey, Matt. Monthly is kind of eh. Notice here, you guys. This is what makes this one tricky. See how that pulled back really sharply here. And it kind of shifted, it had a 2T up here, but it only had one leg down. And so ideally to get that breaking out higher, you know, it would have been nice if it done something like that or something like this, like a bigger check mark, you know, where it, that drop wouldn't have been as extreme and then it kind of like rounded off so it's just been kind of doing like a creeper move all the way to get back up and creeper moves they can flush more easily this was kind of started turning into a creeper move so you can see how that flushed easily so as far as like time development goes on um this correction here this is where a correction starts here's where the previous one started so correction wise it's really early on it's kind of like at a midway point so if this tries to break at that midway point it could still go and do another correction over here before it would try to do any other upside move and that's assuming it tries to do another upside move that's like the time development that i would be looking for and then I, of course i'd need to see if there's you know any other setup on the smaller time frame to really give it that so right now I indifferent on this, you know, on, on where this is because it hasn't gone out long enough that I'd be too interested in on buy. It, it could even go and do some stuff that shifts it and turns it back around again because it's not unusual to get a double tap of a high and then have it immediately double tap again and then try to hold with that too. So with this kind of creeper move up here, that opens the door for that flush to come in so you know that's what I'm, I'm looking at on this let me check out the daily I mean these could just be traps this could be traps you know just trying to push people out above the other high DG You can see this is trying to shift. Has potential for two T's up here on the daily time frame. Weekly is really steep still. So two T's could be more of like um, a swing trade, not necessarily a total reversal. Same thing, look at the monthly time frame. So momentum in larger time frames is really important because if you don't have a shift up here on a larger time frame, then your shorter time frame corrections could just be things like, you know, these little moves like this, and then it could do something that tries to shift the momentum a little bit better. So you could get, you know, corrections like this pretty easily, but it might not do any like full reversal or correction. It could still push to higher highs, it, you know, shift the momentum on a bigger time frame. So as far as DG goes, it, it looks like it still has more upside, but it's probably going to get choppier about it. So you're probably going to get more back and forth. 
you know, it could do a ballet toe on a monthly time frame, which can still mean some really great swings back and forth on the smaller time frames, but not necessarily so much as far as like a bigger correction. I don't think I would want to like do any investment at this level because of the fact that it could do more of that back and forth. So you could easily end up, you know, negative right away, but no. Eh. I don't know. Maybe if you're swing trading back and forth and just kind of building a position using advanced trade management, that would be fine. That would be fine. So like if you get a 2T here, pulse back, then you see it shift again. Um, one thing to watch is here's where their momentum is shifting here. It's like 173-ish. And so if it pulls back to that 173-ish, it's going to be harder to put in a brand new trend on the upside. If it pulls back less than that, and then you get buy setups in there, it's easier for that to pop back up again. So, you know, if it can correct into here, you could get some buy setups that could give you some swings again at that level. That's what I would watch for on DG. And so that would be putting you into September before you would see another like um, higher probability buy setup on DG. Let's do two more here for you guys. Coker. I really like Kroger back in here because look at those beautiful phoenixes. Those were some really nice phoenixes coming out. So see this? See how that popped over a third there? So it had a trouble trying to get going again. So look at that. It popped up here more than a third of the straw. And it, did, it even popped right here a third of this drop. And then, so even when it tried to go lower, it struggled. So this is, you know, really kind of in this range here. It holds the, holds the low really well. This can kill, still keep creeping up. I don't see any, like, reversal or anything. You know, we've got a measured move here. So you've got some short-term exhaustion. This could shift momentum, but still push higher. Um, let me look at the weekly, see if we get any other additional shift. Okay, so weekly, you know, weekly is showing us some short-term exhaustion. But the correction could just as easily go into a, a choppy move and then try to push again. You can see here's like a, a 2T. It's a steep one probably see this better on a daily time frame so let me put that on there no you actually don't see it better on a daily so what we got on the daily here there so that's what you know it tried to do a 2t but it didn't have that larger time frame really um, working for it and there was uh, already a higher high over here so you've got a momentum reversal plus that tried but the trunch placement just wasn't there for it so it only got to right here and what did I show you guys earlier if you have something that's like a 2t or something it only comes up to here and it can't push into this zone quickly you got to watch out because it's more likely to fail so you can manipulate your trade in here so that it gets to the point that if it does break you're not ending up with a full stop and this is a good example of that but i don't really see anything yet um you know maybe this pulls up here so it treats this like a two-wave correction instead and then tries to correct on there on the daily time frame but the monthly looks like you know it's holding up pretty well whoops yeah I'm not logged in properly on here right now. I don't want to join. Sorry. I'm already joined. 
I don't want to go look up my login stuff. <laughs> so we'll go back here. There we go. So you know the monthly still has room, but it's it's about seven um seventy six point four percent of this retracement um from the drop, so, and the seventy six point four is not going to be as strong of a resistance zone. Why? Yeah, it's going to be resistance, but it wasn't a steady move up into seventy six point four. It had a double bottom, so. Even though it can pause at 76.4 retracement, it can still just stall there and, and push higher. So don't get too gung ho on fighting that momentum right now, is basically what I'm saying. Um, let's see. I think somebody asked about silver. Yeah, Karen. See this rounding? This is what we were talking about earlier, where when you get the really strong pullback and it's extreme of slower move. So one, two, three, shift. That allows this pop here. Nice flush here right before the pop too. This is beautiful. I really like it when something is rounding, you guys like that did, and then it flushes. That's so nice because it just takes out everybody. And so then when that pops back up, you can take these little phoenixes and the continuations, and then you can get that strong move coming out of it. So you'll often see two little moves like that. And sometimes that scares people off because they're like, oh, that third one's gonna be dead. Ooh, but you got the flush there. So even though it's done two measured moves back up in here, that pause can still give you a really nice break. Now we are at a level now that, you know, things are gonna kind of widen up here a little bit more now. Daily time frame, you can see that pulled back about a third there. So this is gonna have a harder time, you know, pushing through that high again. You can pull back a little bit more. It can still hold and then eventually go higher, but it's probably gonna go into the congestion for a couple of weeks first. All right, you guys, thank you for joining me here today. And uh, I will get this saved, get posted over there to YouTube for you guys. If you don't see me post the link here within the next couple of hours, please don't hesitate to harass me. Totally okay with being harassed. <laughs> All right, you guys, have a wonderful rest of your day. And if you guys have extra questions please feel free to bring them up in league of traders or um, post them in the forum all right take care everyone i will see you next week